So I hear you're running out of time. All right. Does the test feel impossible to finish? Whatever you're doing, impossible? All right, so you've come to the right place. We're gonna take care of that today. So the issue is you are running out of time. It might be you are simply not getting to the questions or you don't have time to check over your work, whatever. All right, so there's many things that could be going on and we're gonna go through them. So first, let me make a little note. I'm gonna focus my presentation a little more on, a little more on the math side of things. But what I say applies to everything. So it applies to English, uh, anything that's not math and English, anything at all. If that said, if you want a little more emphasis on specific English tips, let's say the reading comprehension, you're too slow on that sort of stuff, see my video number 3.2 in the ELA series on my channel, tip number one. All right, so I'll mention that. But keep in mind, like I said, just because I'm focusing more on math, this doesn't just apply to math. All right. So... In order to solve this problem, we're going to have a combination of long-term fixes and short-term fixes. Now, let's say you have an exam tomorrow, then chances are you don't have time to do all this stuff here, so you're probably just going to want to skip and go to the short-term fixes. That said, if you do have some more time, let's say you have at least a week, of preferably a month or more, you probably want to hit these long-term elements first and then go to the short-term fixes. The effectiveness of the short-term stuff I tell you will not be as great if you don't do the long-term stuff first. So just keep that in mind. All right. So with that said, let's go over three big long-term issues. So you may not have enough knowledge. So for example, you may not know what the quadratic equation is or what is an integer or what's a certain vocabulary word, what that means. Those are all pretty fundamental issues, and you cannot fix those overnight. So to fix these, I recommend look over the syllabus of what's required of you and make sure you know what all of those topics, all of those themes, subtopics, all that stuff is. So that's at a minimum. And then you want to do a lot of volume of practice questions. So basically for, all of, for a lot of these things, I'm going to keep going back to the same thing, which is... If you're running out of time, you probably didn't practice enough. So you want to do more practice volume of questions, particularly hard problems. Not so much for this first one, but it's always good to throw it. So in other words, if you're doing 100 questions and they're all easy for you, you're not getting much out of it. But at the very least, if you do a lot of volume, you'll start coming across a lot of maybe terms you don't know. So for example, let's say you know what the ones digit is but you've never heard of the units digit. The units digit is the same thing as the ones digit, but you wouldn't know that if you've never seen a question that asked you for it. All right, so make sure to do a lot of volume. Next, skills. You might think, well, look, I know everything I need to know. I know the quadratic equation. I know all my vocabulary words. I know I memorized the whole dictionary. I know everything. I know similar triangles. I know everything I need to know. However, you might just suck. So not, not you as a person, but your skills. So you might think, look, I know how to expand x plus y squared, but does it take you 30 seconds to do that? So x plus y squared, if you expand this, you should get x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. And that should take you five seconds. If it doesn't, there's nothing wrong. It just means you need to practice it more. So it's not just about learning more and more and more new stuff. It's about perfecting and mastering the existing stuff. So in fact, most of the time with students, this is only like 2% of the problem. Like 90% of the problem is that all the things they think they know, they only know at a very mediocre level. So we have to go and master this. Like basic multiplication, 13 times 9. It shouldn't take you 2 seconds, but let's say 10, 15 seconds. You should be able to do 90 plus 27 and get 117. If that's problematic, then your basics, right, your skills are not mastered. So you need to do a lot more practice, you need to do a lot more volume, and also hard questions. And the reason I say hard questions is that if you're doing easy questions, they may not force you to master the content, whereas um, the hard questions will force you to strengthen your skills. Let me say this. So for example, for math, let's say you're practicing for a, a test for high school or the SAT or the ACT or whatever, the SHSAT, whatever exam it is, you might want to go and do math contest level problems. So there's a wonderful site, The Art of Problem Solving. Go pull up some old math contests appropriate to your grade level, like such as the AMC 10 or 12 or whatever. 
and go do some of those. You'll find this is very much like strength training and weightlifting. If you're doing a lot of volume, but you're always doing the easy questions, like if, if you're just doing the questions for your exam, you might not improve that much because it's like you're doing the same exercise every time you go to the gym. So let's say you could do push-ups. If you just do push-ups, you're going to get stronger, but only up to a certain point. Or you're just doing pull-ups or squats. If you're just squatting with your body weight, there's only so strong you can get. You're going to have to add weight. So the way you add weight is you do harder problems. Same thing. So if you're cranking out 30, 40, 50 reps of easy problems, you're, doing, you're working your endurance and not your strength or your difficulty, your content mastery. So anybody that does any strength training will tell you if you want to get strong, you want to do a harder exercise for fewer reps. All right. So that's how it relates to strength training if you guys are into fitness or going to the gym or whatever. Next, shortcuts. These are really the same thing, but I want to make a point of separating them a bit. When I say skills, I'm referring to basic skills such as X plus Y squared. Then you have shortcuts, which are things that aren't really required of you, but if you know it, it'll give you an edge. So here's an example. 3x equals 12. What is 6x? Now, I, I know most of you can probably solve this problem. You could say x is equal to 4 by dividing by 3, and then 6 times 4 is 24. Now, that 24 is not the point. The point is how did you get that 24? If you divided this by 3, then I would, like it, for, per, for instructional purposes, I would say you failed. Because all you could have done is just doubled the 3 to a 6 and just saw that, you could have seen that 12 times 2 is 24. That may seem like an insignificant thing, but you've saved yourself some, some work. So seeing shortcuts can be a real, real help. That I'm really big on shortcuts. So someone that's typically doing really well on all these exams and stuff, it's not like they know one shortcut. They know hundreds of shortcuts, and maybe like five or ten of them came up on the exam. So the more you learn of these, you don't have to know all of them, but it'll start to become a factor. All right, so here's another problem just to emphasize. This is like a baby problem. This is a, more, a problem where the shortcut matters even more. So let's say we know that this is of length 10 and this is of length 9. And I want you to find the perimeter of this shape. And let's say these are all at 90 degree angles. It's just My diagram is not perfect, but these are all straight 90 degree angle steps. All right, what's the perimeter of the shape? So you might say, well, look, I don't, I don't know what this length is. So, uh, I mean, you might start doing all sorts of things. You might assume maybe this is one, that's another one. Or if you see the insight, the shortcut, you could think, wait, when I add up all of these, won't I just get the 10? And same thing on the other side. So you could think of the shape like let's move everything out this way and that way. So we just get a rectangle. So if you can convince yourself that the perimeter of the rectangle is the same as the shape, then you'd be done very quickly. It would be 10 plus 9 and then another 10 plus 9, so it would be 19 times 2 or 38, instead of bothering with all the little stuff. That's not obvious, but again, let me emphasize. So if you take all these little blue segments and push them out, you will complete this entire wall. Same thing on the left. Then you could take, let's say, all of these. And if you push them up against the wall, you'll see that it's the same thing as this entire side. So although the shape looks different, the perimeter is the same. So I think this is like a bigger example of the shortcut really helping. So if you know a lot of these sorts of things, they're going to start to really make a huge difference. So I'll, I'll leave it at that. So how do you practice this? You do a large volume of questions, but specifically hard questions. If you're only doing easy questions, you're not going to really le learn the shortcuts. So you're going to have to look at the solutions, think about them. Uh, ask people for help and I'll get I'll say more on that in a bit all right next so let's say you've been doing all this you've been conscientiously practicing you're getting your volume for like months and months all right now it's like you still have a few points that you, you're still running low on time this didn't work it only worked like halfway all right so now you've set yourself up for our short-term fixes the first one this is a really common one so I wrote lame because you didn't really need me to tell you this, but I, I feel like I would, I would be doing you a disservice if I didn't say this because I know somebody out there is going to have this problem. Time management. So let's say there's an exam of 100 questions and you come across this question 
and you're like, I know I can do this. I know I can do this. And then on the exam, you spend like 20 minutes trying to figure out this one problem that you practiced and you feel like you, it, it's, it becomes a personal ego thing. Like I must solve this problem. Meanwhile, you run out of time on all the other easy questions you could have gotten. So don't turn this into an ego battle. I think of it like pinball. If you've ever played the pinball game where you just, you shoot the ball with these little sticks and you're just trying to rack up as many points as possible. So if there's a hundred questions and you know how to do a lot of them, get, do all the ones you know how to do, come back to the ones that are giving you trouble if you, if you feel like you might not be able to do it. So that's time management. I think you probably heard that tip many times, so I think that's super lame, but I, I'll say it for completeness. All right, here is the tip that I love and I think this is really what I want to contribute to you guys. This is like the new idea, all right? So slow down. Now you might be thinking, I'm running out of time. Ilya's telling me to slow down so Ilya's an idiot or he's, he's some sort of cruel prankster or something. All right, let me give you a, a bit of a, a, a little backstory. So once I had to, I gave this quiz to a class and I had to come up with the answer key as they were doing the exam. So in other words, they were doing the exam as I was doing the exam. I'd actually never seen it and, and they'd never seen it. So, and if you look at both of us working, the students and me, you'll find that they're scribbling away like blah, 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 blah. and then I'm sort of working really casually, like really slowly. So by looking at both of us, you might think, well, they're working faster, so they, they're going to finish first. Turns out, not to show off, but I finish like in, a half, in half the time they finish, or a third of the time. So why is that? Because I do this. So how, does, how is this going to work? Now, when I say slow down, I don't mean work slow. You're going to work at an active pace, but you're not going to rush. If you've ever tried to run out of your house, and let's say you're looking for your keys, if you really have to be somewhere, it gets a lot harder to find your keys. But if you're calmly looking for things, you're going to be more creative. So there's many benefits. So for example, if I'm approaching problems really slowly, relatively slowly, comfortably, I'm going to look for elegant solutions. So for example, if you're rushing, you're not going to see that solution. You're just going to start, I don't know, fr frantically doing something. If I'm really calm, I'm going to see what's a clever way to do this. So you're going to find more elegant solutions. You're going to be more creative. Next, your errors are going to go down. So I'll just read what this says because this is a little messy. Your, your amount of errors are going to go down. So if I say, do this in three seconds, you might be able to do it, but you and I, we both might make an error on that. If I give you an extra two or three seconds, you might get it right. So it's not worth doing it super fast to get it wrong. Only do it as fast as you feel comfortable doing it. So, when I say slow down, this is not necessarily from like 100% to 30%. This might be from 100 to 94%. So you're going to make fewer errors because you're not rushing as much. You're carefully checking over things. Now, here's a really big one, and this is related to all this stuff, the fight or flight response. If you've ever been nervous and you're running, like just trying to do stuff or, or you're scared, your fight or flight response is activated. So your hormones, your, your physiology changes. You, you know, your eyes, your adrenaline starts pumping. Whereas if you're relaxed, you're going to be more creative. So for example, if you're into art or composition, try being scared and writing a musical composition at the same time. It's not going to work, right? So if you're relaxed, maybe it's like late at night, you're relaxing, you might want to draw something like that. So if you're really calm and you're not as nervous, you're going to be looking for more elegant solutions and make fewer errors. Also, I want to emphasize that in practice, the slowing down is more on the setup of the problem. So let's say you have a problem like 3x plus 4y is 7, 5x minus 2y is 8, or whatever. Now let's say the original problem was some sort of word problem. So like, I have three pencils and four pens and pencils cost whatever pens cost, it doesn't matter. And I made this much money, how many pencils did I sell, whatever. I want you guys to set up the problem very slowly because there's a high chance of error in the setup. Once you've set it up, I want you to go fast and be able to do that. And that's where this practice comes into place, uh, into play. So if your skills aren't that great, you might make a mistake in solving this you might not even know how to solve this. So, you know, I'm going to do, like on that example when I was administering the quiz to, to the class, 
I did this as quickly as the class did, if not faster, because I practiced my skills. I mean, there's kids in the class that did it as fast as I did or faster. However, I set this up slowly, so while the kids were rushing to do this, half of them might have made a mistake if there was some trick in the problem. So make sure you kind of start really slow, so you're comfortable, you play around the problem until you feel comfortable, and, and then you speed up. If you start too fast, I mean, if you've ever like, played a music piece or something, if you start making mistakes, it's harder to slow down. It's much better to learn it slowly and then speed it up. All right, so make sure your setup is slow. You're comfortable and then you speed up. Even on an exam, like the first few problems, you don't just rush in too excited and make a lot of careless errors. You can pick up the pace as you go through. So try this, it's very counterintuitive, but you might find that to work faster, you have to work slower. So again, very, you won't believe this until you try. All right. Now, I'm gonna leave you guys with a final thought. So, a lot of the stuff, specifically the shortcuts, but also the skills, you're really gonna make more progress if you have a tutor or a teacher or parent or somebody that can assess you. Just like if you're a dancer, you might need a mirror or an instructor that can help you make progress faster because you might not even see what you're doing wrong. You might think, hey, I know how to multiply, but somebody comes in and tells you, wait, you actually need more work on this. Or, hey, I thought doing this in a minute was great. And you didn't know that, like every, you're like, hey, I got an A plus in my class, my teacher said it's fine, but maybe that's not good enough. All right, so having an outside person help you or assess where you are can be super duper helpful. Now, a lot of you can't afford that or you don't have access or you don't have time or whatever, and that's honestly one of the reasons I'm making these videos. So it's to help you guys with such issues because I want to help improve, I want to help transform education and ultimately have that improved society. So with that big uh, sort of mumbo jumbo dream out of, the, uh, out of the way, if you guys have other questions, so I'm going to do a few more of these I already have planned, but if you have other questions that you want to see me do, uh, please, you know, comment below the video. If it's super private, you know, you want to tell me about how your cat likes cheeseburgers, but you don't want any, anybody to know or something, but you need help with something, send me a private message, that's fine too. So yeah, please share what you want help with. Uh, let me know if something I said was really helpful or maybe it wasn't helpful and you say, hey Ilya, you told me to slow down, now I'm doing worse, thanks a lot, whatever it is. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video.